Hi, this is the second part of the graphical analysis using Jobs method to calculate the formula of a chemical compound. So in the pre-lab, what you've done is hopefully made your Excel chart that has your volume of your 0.1 molar potassium iodine, your volume of 0.1 molar lead to nit, and now the mass that these two compounds made once they've made their precipitate of each one, you have calculated the mole fraction of the iodine ion, and you have calculated the mole fraction of the lead ion. We're now going to be graphing the mass of the precipitate and the mole fraction of the iodine. The mole fraction is going to go on the horizontal x-axis, and the mass of the precipitate is going to go on the vertical y-axis. Now taking a look at our graph, so once again you can see the mole fraction of the iodine is on the x-axis, the horizontal axis, and the mass of the precipitate is in grams and then it's on the y-axis. You can draw two best fits line here, one going with this pattern of plotted points and one going with this pattern of plotted points. Where the line intersects is where you want to read the mole fraction of the iodine ion, which you can see is approximately about 0.67. So once again, you want to draw two best fit lines, one going with one series of plotted points, one going with the others. Where these intersect is where you want to read the mole fraction of the iodide ion. So if the mole fraction of the iodine ion is 0.67 for the iodide ion, then the mole fraction for the lead ion would be 0.33 because of course both of these would have to add up to 1. And by looking at this ratio, when I take 0.67 and divide by 0.33, you can see that we're going to get a ratio of two iodine ions for every one lead ion. So that would mean our chemical formula would be PBI2. And by using the graphical analysis, you could compare mass precipitate, we could measure the height of the precipitate, you could measure the temperature change in the experiment. As long as you measure some type of change from that chemical reaction and graph it versus the mole fraction of one of them, you're going to be able to determine the chemical formula of your compound that you've made.